sponsoring this video, free TV for life for all my cord cutters that enjoy watching streams and getting streams. Check the video description link. Lakeisha will always put her son first. It's what we mothers do. Are you fucking kidding me right now? You know, Molly would have been a better choice. Holly, ma. At least she didn't have kids. When people let you down, it, it don't end well for you. Or them. We did Power Episode 4, Season 6. I got my wife. We're going to review it. Please subscribe. First scene. Well, let me just talk about who got right on the deaths. To all my people out there that said Proctor's wife would die, shouts out to y'all. I've seen people in there trying to pick on y'all in the comment section. And also to my IMDB boys. I told y'all before, you can't always go by what IMDB says because they will try to throw you off. Everybody thought Proctor was going to die, even me, because he wasn't showing up on the IMDb cast anymore. But as you see, he lived. IMDb is not always gospel. This is Hollywood. The first scene that we do, and ladies and gentlemen, this week, we're going to talk about what is the significance of every scene. First scene was Ghost talking to Angela. She was basically asking Ghost, um, why is Tommy still alive? What do you think was important about that? Which was the title of this episode? I think it's showing that Ghost is having this internal turmoil um, between kind of the old Ghost and the Ghost that he wants to be and feeling like he needs to um, kind of live up to the, the, the man that he told Angela that he was. Right. So it's just, I think it's just highlighting that he's having this inner turmoil and we have to figure out which Ghost is going to win out. I agree. Definitely on that one. Next frame. Tommy tells the crew about the extra shipment and then he gets a phone call, blowing up his phone. And the crew bets on whether it's his mama or Keisha. <laughs> What'd you think about that? <laughs> I don't, I mean, if we had to choose like, what's the reason for them showing that, it's just Tommy is just all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's trying to, he has one foot in the game, but then he has all this other crazy stuff going on in his life. Right. It's like, how do you take him serious as a, as a kingpin, if he has all this other silly stuff going on, he can't focus on what he's supposed to be doing. I'm going to mention that later on in this review, because that's that came up. Next frame, we see Tommy, Mama, and Keisha at Tommy's crib, and <laughs> it's funny as hell. And throughout that scene, Tommy, Mom winds up bringing up Holly to Keisha. What do you think was significance in that? Uh... Let me just say, I love Tommy's mother. Mm -hmm. So Kate, I she is too. a trip. You know, whenever she is in the scene, you are about to see something crazy or hear something crazy. I just like, I, she. she's very funny. I love her. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the point of that, I mean, she's just saying what we all thought um, right. and is that Holly was the like the true one for Tommy or she was mm -hmm. about that life. Whereas, um, you know, Keisha, we're still trying to figure her out. Right. Or we right. figure her out, but we, she may end up surprising all of us. Um, she might. Yeah. So it, it just points out that, um, you know, Holly was the one that, Holly was, Holly was Tommy's true love. Okay. True ride I'll or die. i just say that, yeah. Okay. I can agree with that. Next frame, we see Cooper punk ass Sacks putting the squeeze on Proctor's baby mama and Proctor baby mama winds up dropping Tommy's name. What you think is up with that? Uh, I don't in terms of like a storyline, I think what I mostly got from that is that his the the baby mama is not a fit mother. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it, it made you. I mean, she's kind of selling herself as you know she's on the straight and narrow. And to hear the recording that they they showed of her kind of going off on the daughter and, and, mm -hmm. and hitting the daughter lets you know that she is, she ain't no good either. So. She she is a straight space right. case. Next scene we see Ghost Lawyer Proctor pops up in Truth's office to Ghost and brings in Dre. That is directly from the trailer this summer. What did you think? What was your first thought when you saw that? I just thought the scene was a little porny. Sorry. <laughs> My first thought was you can't trust Dre with a dime bag in a nickel store. No, and Ghost already knows that. I mean, mm -hmm. he said that the first when he first saw him, he said you can't trust Dre as far as you can see him basically throw him. Well, um, why did you think it was corny though? I didn't think it was nothing corny. I mean, corny. the fight scene with him kind of with the, the pen in his eye, like he really wanted to do it, but he couldn't do it. I'm like, if you're going to do it, do it. Oh, so you think it was like the NBA hold me yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. Pro Proctor was trying to explain the Ghost how we can use Dre to get us out of trouble. That's mm -hmm. why he ain't do it. Yeah. You know, go okay. smarter than that. Yeah, that was one of those hold me back scenes when yeah. you don't really need to be or want to be held back. 
I, you want somebody to hold you back from kissing me? Oh, goodness. What am I? Okay, okay. <laughs> Next scene, we see Tasha in her daycare meeting what looks to be a new jump off a Sean lookalike with a beard. And I said, the first thing I said to my wife is they about to let her get some panty draws in this episode. What do you think about meeting him? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what his little his little role is. I don't know. You he, know what? I did wonder was he a plant? Like who right, is this guy right. all of a sudden coming up in the daycare center? Ain't got no kids, no teachers. He got a kid. His I daughter. Mean, he, yeah. So he says he has a kid, but the daycare center doesn't have any kids. So right, you have right. this empty structure and a lady mm -hmm. just standing in the building. And you gung ho to put your kid up in there. You don't know what type of establishment they about to be running or what. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why I thought like maybe he's a plant. Okay. Um, but. He could be. He's a construction worker. Maybe he admired the aesthetic beauty of the shop because yeah, he's a. Okay. He said he works construction all day he long. He admired the aesthetic beauty that was standing in the shop. Oh, he admired Tasha's Tasha. aesthetic booty. Did beauty. you you said, said booty said or beauty? Beauty. Oh, you said Whatever. okay, okay. <laughs> Next, ghost goons confront. I mean, Jason's goons confront ghosts in truth. This was from the trailer clip that we seen this week. When I even mentioned. How you gonna have these goons running up on Ghost making him look like a punk? But what happened in the scene was Ghost beat his chest, got in the man face, let him know, hey, I am still Ghost. But what was significant from this scene for me was the other henchman dropped a dime about the Irish and the deal Tommy was getting ready to do. What do you think was the significance of that one? Well, you know that Ghost, uh, basically they slipped up and, and gave Ghost some information that he's gonna end up using later. Right, right. Next frame, Ghost gets with Tate and tells Tate, look, I need you to shut down this specific block. And Councilman Tate, still not really trusting Ghost, puts his tail Will Robertson on Ghost. That happens. What do you think about that? I'm just showing you that they're working together. So, and they still don't <laughs> trust each other. Right. You got you got strange be bedfellows on that one. Mm -hmm. Next frame, we got Tariq sneaking up into Tommy's warehouse. And how did he figure that out? He went through his Uber app when he used Uber to help Tommy get to his warehouse the last time. He gets into the warehouse and he's trying to house Tommy's drugs. We predicted that one too. What did you think right. the significance in showing that? Right. I mean, just confirming that he has access to Tommy's stuff and he went ahead and, and took his opportunity. Right. And while he was in there, his ass almost got caught by 2-Bit and the crew when he was fumbling around the boxes and all that. Mm -hmm. The next frame we see Tasha confronts Ramona about the money from the QCP and she basically tells her, look, chill out. That's mm -hmm. what Ramona says. But then Tasha hits her with this. You not a parent. Mm -hmm. So how can you put me into the same diagram? What would right. you think about that scene? I mean, it seems like Ramona is going to try to kind of control Tasha a little bit with this, you know, we on the same team. I know where you are and I know who, where you've come from. Mm -hmm. But Tasha just kind of standing her own. She just showing that she has her own mind. But we'll right. see if she falls in line or if she does her own thing. Right, right. Next frame, Tommy tries to move his drugs via the ambulance. I'm just like, damn, Tommy got an ambulance? Where he getting the ambulance from? And during that whole scene, Ghost, this is the person Ghost was trying to kill from the trailer this week. He rams him with the ambulance. It gets into a shootout. And during that scene, what was significant to me was 2-Bit has got more questions to Tommy. Like you said earlier, Tommy's leadership is under question. 2-Bit questions it because Tommy didn't tell 2-Bit that Ghost was at war with them. What do, you th what do you think about that scene? Initially, I didn't... I don't know, I, did, I didn't read into it too much, but you bringing up the point that 2-Bit did question Tommy. Right. Um, like, you didn't tell me that. Uh -huh. um, maybe that's the whole point of it. Right. Let you know that 2-Bit may you know, look at Tommy a different way, knowing that he's not as in control as he thought he was. Exactly. And then from there, the tale that Councilman Tate put on goes lets them know to get the police there, which are crooked cops that are self-servant to Tate. They arrest Ghost, bring them back to truth. He walks in there, Tate sitting in his office in his chair and says, I knew I couldn't trust you. Mm -hmm. But then Ghost let him know, hey, bro, I still got dirt on you. Mm -hmm. We in bed together. So mm -hmm. you let me do my job, you do your job. What do you think was mm -hmm. the significance of that? Scene? It's still a, a power struggle. Um, right. You know, one beating their chest and saying they got the power, the other one saying they had a power when ultimately they're, like you said, they're in bed together. So if one goes down, the other one goes down. And during that same scene, Angela pops up in that red Johnny Gill dress again. 
she appears to Ghost and she says, I never said you had killed, I wanted you to kill Tommy. I just said, why is Tommy still alive? And at that point, you can see where she basically challenged um, Ghost, what kind of man are you gonna be? And that's the point where I think Ghost realized he's not gonna be a killer anymore. That's when it clicked. Mm -hmm. I'm not killing people no more. What did you think about that scene? Uh, I think asking him that question also is saying, you know, why is Tommy still alive? Meaning you don't really want to kill him. Mm -hmm. um, if you're the ghost that I know, and I know you know how to kill somebody, why is he still running the streets? You really, you really don't want to kill him. Right, right. Next, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. go ahead. That's it. Next scene, we cut the sax and Dre talking in the restaurant while be wearing a wire that Dre, I mean that um, ghost and Proctor put on him. And you can kind of see during that, that, exchange with those two, Proctor realizes that Cooper Sacks is doing this off the books and right. he's dirty. Right. But at the same time, Dre says a little more than what he should say and that probably confirms the ghost how dirty Dre is. What'd right. you think about that scene? Yeah, I agree. Same thing. Yeah. Next scene, Dre follows Cooper Sacks to Maria's crib and gets the address for ghosts. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. What'd you think about that one? I mean, Dre is just, like you said, dirty all around. So he's, it, 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 it's still hard to figure out who he's, well, we know he's serving himself. Right. But it's still hard to, to figure out who he, whose side he's on the most. So okay. So is he really serving Cooper Sacks? Is he really serving Proctor and Ghost? Right. You right. know, I guess, I think they'll continue to keep us a little confused on that. Exactly. They know what they do. But you know, ultimately, he's going to look out for himself. Daggone straight. Next frame, we got Jason running up on Ghost in truth. And he lets Ghost know, I know how you got that whole little gas main thing set up. So basically, I think Jason now knows Ghost is in cahoots with Councilman Tate. Mm -hmm. While he's saying that to him, he's also saying, you might as well be my distro because this will alleviate all your problems. All while crooked ass Dre is standing above in the perch listening. What do you think mm -hmm. was significance of that scene? <laughs> Um, I guess that lets you know that Jason isn't going to let Ghost go as easy as we think. Mm -hmm. I guess we didn't think it would be easy anyway, but now he's realizing that Ghost is a lot more valuable than Tommy, if anything, saying that he got his hands up and, you know, people up in government helping him out. Right. Um, and then Dre listening to that information. I wonder if, if Ghost saw him or knows he's up there standing around. Oh, uh, he wouldn't. Knowing Ghost, he 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 knows that um, Dre isn't running around a club and didn't see that scene. Right. Because Dre is just nosy and, like you said, he's trying to. It's, it's all about self-preservation. Exactly. So we'll we'll see. Yep. Next frame, Ghost and Dre show up at Maria's house, the witness chick, and instead of killing her, which is what Dre thought was going to happen, Ghost offers her money, drops the money, tries to walk away. As I said, this was Ghost basically trying to say he's a better man, he's not gonna do it. But that messed up Dre because he texts Cooper Sacks right then in a double cross of Ghost to let Cooper Sacks know that they was he thought Ghost was gonna kill him. What do you think was the significance of that scene? Yeah, I mean, Dre is just flip-flopping. Again, we don't know who he's actually trying to help in this. I think whoever he feels like has the upper hand at the time, that's who he's gonna ride with. Right. Um, it did surprise me. Well, I didn't think Dre, um, Ghost was gonna kill Maria. Um, right. I don't know, Have he, has he killed any women in the show? He always had like a soft spot for the women in, in these shows. He let her go in the beginning. I didn't really see him killing her again. Right, I, I think he killed a chick way back in the first season or something like that. We had to go do some research. The next scene, um, Dre and Ghost are in his car leaving and the feds run up on Maria's crib. That's whose house it was, Maria's crib. But what was significant about that scene to me was how they wanted us to think that Ghost didn't see the feds running up in there. Mm -hmm. But as the feds was running, you saw Ghost wink his eye at Dre, and then as they was leaving off, I saw Ghost look into his mirror but never said anything, yeah. which lets me know that Ghost is already on to Dre. What did you think yeah. about that? I mean, Dre let out a sigh of release, like he, re relief, like he had kind of gotten through, or gotten right. out of the situation. Mm -hmm. But if you looking over your shoulder as much as Ghost has had to look over his shoulder, there's no way that he didn't see all those um, FBI agents at that apartment. Exactly. So right. He's just like not letting Dre know that, but true, he knows it. Next frame, Tommy learns from the Italians that Tariq stole from his family. What they setting up with that? 
Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, I think that they just setting up that there's going to be a war between the Italians and Tommy, and it's going to be over Tariq, and we learn later on in the show that the Italians plan on using Tariq because one of my favorite scenes from this episode was when the Italian dude learned called Tariq back and he slammed Tariq's head on the table because that's the butt whipping I want to see Tariq get, that little badass. He been due for a butt whipping and that was the closest thing we got. Mm -hmm. He says we're going to use Tariq against his uncle and his daddy. Right. And I think this is just a setup for the war that's going to ensue that is going to bring Tommy and Ghost back uh -huh. together. Yeah. And probably kill them both over Tariq. Mm -hmm. And Tariq punk ass going to survive. What I don't get is how did Tariq think he was going to end up funneling money to the funneling drugs to the Italians by stealing from Tommy? Because Tariq is young and dumb. So if Tommy stuff Tommy is struggling a little bit, so if Tommy stuff is running out, right? Then you don't have what you need to supply to the Italians. Then you up a creek. Tariq dumb. When it comes to the drug game, he he need to stick to the books. That's his problem. He's, oh, he's dumb. I didn't understand that whatsoever, but <laughs> hey. Hey. Next scene we cut to, Tommy's mom is talking to Keisha about Holly and what has happened in the past when all of a sudden, Keisha's son walks in, beat the hell up. Tommy's mom at that moment realizes as Keisha's about to run out the door to get those children that Keisha's going to always choose her son over Tommy. And then, the, then they have a frame where Tommy's mom confronts Tommy and says she's going to always do that. And Tommy kicks his mama out because mm -hmm. he just don't want to believe it. What do you yeah. think's up with that? I think he believes it. I well, mean, his, well, why he kick his mama out then? He just don't want to hear her say it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he's, he's taking it in, but he just don't want to hear her say it. And so that was his excuse to get her on out the house. But his, I, I love his mama. Right, right. <laughs> and she's just speaking truth on what she knows. She's been about that life too. And mm -hmm. so she's just calling her as she sees it. And hopefully Tommy will listen to her. He ain't listening. <laughs> Next frame, we got Tommy confronts Tariq. Tariq sits there and lies to Tommy face the same way he lied to Ghostface about where he got the drugs from. And Tommy just melted in his hands when he said that it was Dre and Tommy Tommy just, oh, he, Tariq. No, he said it was Kanan. Yeah, he said it was Kanan, but he still just, just melted in his hands. I said, that was probably that part where we wanted Tommy to, to go at him and get him when he found out he got double crossed, but I don't think he wants to believe it. Right. Yeah. Next frame, we got Tasha and Ghost at the daycare. Tasha's confronting Ghost about the money. And then that's when Ghost get to put eyeballs on Tasha's new jump ball. What was mm -hmm. they saying? And the jump ball act like he tough. Mm -hmm. He said he's dealt with people scarier than Ghost. Mm -hmm. Do he know what Ghost is? Who knows? We don't know what his background is either. So who knows? Would you think they're going to tell us? I mean, just judging by the looks, I'm saying you ain't never dealt with nothing like ghosts. Mm. I mean, you can say what you want. And who says he's in construction? That's when what people, he said. When people say they're in construction, isn't that usually you in the drug game yourself? I, no? I mean, Correct me if I'm wrong. But it could be. Y'all leave us comment. <laughs> I ain't never heard that before. I uh, mean, usually they, they funneling money through a washer red, a laundromat, mm, or something like that, mm, not construction. I thought construction was cold for something else, but we okay, let well, us know. We'll see. Next frame, Proctor gives his baby mama a fake letter saying that she didn't make the bar which sends her back into drugs, which eventually sends her into OD while Proctor is standing there looking at her die. He was about to call 911. He didn't because he wanted her to die. All while that thing Cooper Sacks has on his daughter's book bag is recording the whole event. What in the mm, world? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, watching her just melt down that quick just tells me that like the little girl does not need to be with the mama. If that quick, you're going to melt down and go back to drugs. And so he's right in trying to get custody of his daughter. Um, whether or not he's going to go down for not calling the police when this happened. He basically kind of admitted that he done it on purpose at the end when she died. And that's on the camera. I mean, that's going to be on the recorder. Well, he need to grab the letter that he gave, the fake, you know, fell in the board letter right. that, he, that she has and to cover his tracks. Right. And final frame we're going to cover, Ghost is talking to... Angela again in that red dress when he admits to Angela that he officially killed 
Terry Silver, he lied to her, and he admits that he's going to be a better man. What do you think they're alluding to is going to wind up happening with Ghost? That inner turmoil again. Right. She she said that you will. When he said that he didn't he didn't kill Maria or he wasn't going to kill Maria or whatever. Right. Um, she said you will. Yeah. And so she the did. question is, will he actually do it or will he prove her wrong? Right. Right. So we still don't know if he's a good guy, bad guy, what. I think this is him turning the corner into the good guy. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes the rest of this season. And for those of you that keep saying these comments, yes, there there's 10, 10, 10 episodes of this quote-unquote regular season. Then there's going to be five more episodes that start in January. And I think those five episodes are kind of kind of going to be the bridge to the new series that are coming. But leave us all your comments about what you thought about this particular episode. I mean, it was just kind of a prelude to other things to come. Anything else you want to say while we get out of here? Mm -mm. More scenes with Kate. Yeah, yeah, she's funny. <laughs> That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. Please comment, subscribe, go get yourself a life gain. If you stayed and watched this full 20 minutes, you're definitely a big supporter of this channel. Please go check me out at my Patreon link if you want to donate. And if you want to get power t-shirts and hats, check my video description link for those as well. And until the next Sex is Hell video, we'll see you.